Hey guys, welcome to Xbox On. We were recently in Malmo, Sweden at the Massive Studios to have a little look at The Division 2. We had the chance to play and capture some Dark Zone and PvP content, and we want to show you everything we've seen. This was only our first hands-on, and there will be lots more to tell you about as the release gets closer. What we can tell you all about now is our experience with the Dark Zone and how it might be a little bit different to the experience you had in The Division 1, alongside some of the brand new PvP modes coming to the sequel soon. The Dark Zone experience, as it has been referred to, has been expanded and packed full of potential for players to create their own ecosystems and ways of playing. Dark Zone entered. There are some subtle gameplay changes that hardcore fans will find within the footage, and a few more obvious things like terminals to interact with, new gadgets, new environments, and more. But first, let's set the scene. For those who maybe didn't play any of the Division 1 or step foot in the notorious Dark Zone, it was essentially a closed off area of the map you had to deliberately choose to enter. It looks largely the same as the rest of the world, but it had a PvP element alongside the PvE. You could go kill PvE foes in certain areas, farm them for loot, and run to a specific point on the map and call for an extraction, whilst fighting off more waves of enemies. The twist is that there were also other teams of actual players in the same areas with you. You and they had the chance to either cooperate and get some loot together, or to kill each other and steal all their goodies. It was an intense fight to loot and survive long enough to keep your haul and extract it to your stash, because if you found something awesome and got killed, you'd lose it, likely along with your mind. The Dark Zone was an ever-developing feature in the first game. It was PvP with some PvE thrown in for good measure, or as the devs lovingly put it, PvEVP. It seemed to encourage this weird, cagey style of gameplay. You really wanted that high-level loot, but you had to face high-level bullet-absorbing foes, grab the loot, and try to extract without other players wanting a piece of your pie and ripping out your intestines to get it. Well, it wasn't quite that graphic, but some of the encounters felt like a mental evisceration. Like a newborn lamb born into this world, you wander out so hopeful and trusting and stagger out the other end feeling like a new, more cynical person. Immediate medical assistance needed. Other players in your instance could watch you take down a boss and choose to go rogue, murdering you while you're at your most vulnerable, stealing your loot and running off to extract it. It was a world fraught with perils, making you more long-term enemies than Monopoly. Devs recognized the Dark Zone as a brave experiment that gave the power to the players. It gave the choice to anyone who stepped inside. Were you going to be a helpful, law-abiding citizen, or were you going to cause chaos and go rogue? It was your choice how you behaved in that space. You didn't have to be a brutal savage, but you had to be aware that other people who were in the same area might just be. It's been three years between the original game and the same teams and people that worked on the original experience have carried across to bring you The Division 2. The very same people who've been listening to feedback, viewing player data, seeing what worked and what didn't, and responding by crafting an experience that they hope will offer what fans of The Division 1 are after. There are changes to make, in the devs' own words, the game feel like a fairer playground. A place where high risk, high reward is still relevant, but it doesn't feel like a never-ending swirly in the primary school spoilers. There are a number of design choices and mechanics put in place to try and preserve that unique edge while keeping things relatively fun for the average player too. So let's set the scene. It's approximately seven months after the events in New York City with the first game. A failed containment and the deadly dollar flu virus has spread across the world. Pockets of civilization are trying to rebuild, but Washington is collapsing. There are three Dark Zone areas to explore, kill, and die in in The Division 2. The map is a one-to-one -one replica of Washington DC, and each Dark Zone, or Washington DZ, as I like to call it, has its own section of the city. For example, Dark Zone East is basically Union Square, but, you know, just all overrun and dead and stuff. Each has its own backstory and reason for existing. For example, one zone was once used to house sick people until yellow powder came bubbling up from the sewers, which probably created quite an issue. The zones all look and play a little differently to each other, and the overgrown green cities are definitely a welcome contrast to the stark, snowy New York fans might be used to. The graphics look stunning. There are moments, like the golden sun shining through the trees while you run through the city, that really take your breath away, putting those fabulous Xbox One X enhancements to good use. Some areas do look rather beautiful, and there's a certain stillness in the ambient sounds and the empty environments that does a great job of amplifying those every man for himself vibes the game leans on. Rather than having a huge strip of DZ land in the middle of the map, a la the first game, these new dark zones are placed in the extreme corners of the overall map. This is deliberate, and when this large area dominated the middle of the map, it could impede the flow of PvE players, who had to work their way around it. Moving all of these zones to the edges made the overall game experience feel much more cohesive. It also offers you a different experience depending on which zone you decide to explore. 
Part of the efforts to make the game feel fairer include a new mechanic known as normalization, which in real terms translates to gear and weapons having less of an impact on the gameplay than skill, meaning the biggest factor in whether you win or lose your engagements will be you rather than your gear. Planning your loadout, gadgets and guns to be most effective and having Mac knowledge and coordination will help you out a lot more now. That isn't to say your gear choices are pointless, they'll still affect how you play, but it won't be the be all and end all in an engagement the same way they once were. This is in part due to devs noticing player behavior changes from the first open beta and the first week of gameplay back in 2015. Everything was new, no one had figured out optimal builds, and it felt larger like skill was the real winner. They've definitely tried to emulate this with the gameplay tweaks we see in The Division 2. This also has a knock-on effect to PvE. Previously, there'd be heavy-handed weapon tweaks in patches that aim to make the DZ experience better by changing the effectiveness of certain guns, but it's had an unintended effect for PvE players. With the gear stats being somewhat flattened, there shouldn't be as much of a need for nerfs and buffs that will impact the PvE experience. In terms of gameplay flow, long reload and healing times and an abundance of cover mean you're not just running around gunning people down like a madman, you've got to take it slowly while working around your team and gadget cooldowns to avoid being caught out of place and losing loot. Enemies are slippery. You have to take down the shields before you can start to work on the health, meaning it often takes a couple clips of an AR to down someone. Throwing a grenade or switching weapons takes a noticeable amount of time, which again forces you to really think about your positioning and whether or not you're vulnerable. PvE characters are of course always easier to dispatch, but what about the other players you'll encounter? Other rogue agents are mostly the intelligent threat, the range to your parade and kind of the point of the whole experience. Not every player you encounter will be a rogue agent. Everyone who wanders into the dark zone begins as a regular agent who decides their own fate, but it does mean when you find random players out in the wild, you end up circling each other like wild animals waiting for one side to strike. The rogue system itself has also changed. There are now three levels of rogue, grey, red and yellow. Grey is kind of like your petty thug, maybe you'll pick some locks, steal some loot from supply crates and generally be a low level nuisance. You choose to be a grey level rogue by holding down the select button and this choice is announced in the bottom left. Once one of your squad is rogue, all of you are. So be aware of that because if one of you is badly positioned, you will feel the wrath of enemy rogue players and the auto turrets hanging around, as I found out in a bad time. If you're a grey rogue and you choose to kill another player, you'll be disavowed from the division and become a red rogue, at which point it's fair game for any enemy player to murder you if they don't let that crazy look in your eye. If you're a real bad boy and go on a killing spree, you'll eventually become a yellow level rogue, and manhunts can begin bringing the chance for even better loot. The higher level of rogue means it'll take longer for you to lose your rogue status, meaning you're open to attack from any other player, so survival is key. Completing these is made harder by the yellow rogue showing up and being tracked on the minimap so players are easier to find. Inside the zone you'll find points of interest, landmarks with a mix of low level and boss level enemies waiting who will drop loot upon death. Different levels of rogue also give new missions, especially the yellow rogue, which gives manhunt objectives. The loot that drops doesn't have its role fully decided until you're out of the dark zone too, which helps keep the character level in fluid. Your loot level should track alongside your character level and the loot you already have, so you aren't finding a load of useless low level stuff. Surviving as a rogue also gives you a valuable XP bonus alongside keeping all the loot you grabbed from players you killed along the way. Weapon loadouts will be familiar to fans of the first game, primary, secondary, sidearm, two gadgets, a throwable and a consumable health pack. Specialisations are there, survivalists equipped with a crossbow, sharpshooters with a powerful sniper and demolitionists with launchers. Essentially, specialisations give you an option for a fourth weapon, but it does have very limited ammo that has to be collected via DZ crate drops or in rare cases off the dead bodies of your enemies. The special weapon can't be used all the time, which should help mitigate the overpowered feeling they have. Currently, they are still working out balancing and details like this, so we wouldn't be surprised if things like specialization ammo count is changed and refined upon full release. There are also new gadgets to explore and use, like the assault drone, which was pretty annoying to try and counter. Coordinating with your teammates is also made much easier with the brand new clan system coming on release. Clans will hold 50 unique people each, but each person can have four characters within the clan. Making and joining a clan has been promised to be super, super easy. It's all done inside the game, no need for external apps or websites. If you find friends in the dark zone who help you get that vital extraction, or maybe you come across some like-minded, cold-blooded murderers and decide to join forces, you can come together easily and communicate with voice over IP and other in-game tools. Some players really want a hardcore experience in the dark zone, an unforgiving, intense and extreme version of the DZ experience that gives you a real rush. 
There'll be a whole area dedicated to that hardcore crowd that should scratch that itch. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the details just yet, other than that hardcore mode does exist and sounds hardcore. The other PvP modes we got to look at were Skirmish and Domination. Domination was my personal favourite, but that might have been because the unfortunate team we were paired with got a little bit outclassed, if I do say so myself. It's a classic 4v4 straight PvP in short games. The time to kill is of course very long, with healing added in for good measure, meaning you'll need to think a little bit more about your gameplay before running in. The most interesting thing about the added PvP modes is their reasoning. According to everyone we spoke to, adding PvP modes alongside the DZ was a tactical choice. Having a dedicated PvP environment seemed to help reduce the amount of trolling and toxicity in the DZ when people had an outlet for it, which meant the DZ was opened up for new opportunities for players who maybe did want to craft an experience away from the old grief everyone and laugh about it or sulk when you killed every 5 seconds type of thing. There's a deliberate and subtle shaping of player behaviour that I find quite fascinating. Emoting on a kill is as fun and cheeky as ever, so don't expect that to go away anytime soon. Alongside making lines of beautiful dancers out there in the fray and trying to convince other players to join your cause. The important thing to take away is just how passionate the devs and everyone working on the PvP and Dark Zone content are about making the experience fun and fulfilling. The whole idea of the game modes and after launch support are to make the game feel satisfying, both in the loot you receive and in the psychological experience you have with the game in general. You're rewarded for extracting loot successfully, this is known, but there are more items of non-contaminated loot at a decent level that you'll find in the DZ without having the risk of losing it. The normalisation is designed so teamwork, skill and tactical gameplay take precedence over time spent grinding for the best gear combinations. And isn't that what games should be about? Leaving you feel accomplished and happy with the time you've spent and the activities you've done. Even if there are ups and downs, you should come out feeling like you've at least achieved something for all that hard work you did out there. It feels like that's the goal here, to give you options to tailor the gameplay experience until you're playing things your way. So that's everything we've found out about The Division so far. If you want to find out more, we'd recommend going to mixer.com slash xbox on, where myself and Benny had a chat with a senior game director about everything to do with the Dark Zone. Thank you for watching guys, leave a sub if you're new and a comment below if you're excited for the game to come out. We'll see you next time, bye!